Okay, so it's the uh, last, uh, last lecture of, uh, of this entire course and of the morning. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's good. Um, so I've um, uh, attempted to make a summary of uh, four or five days of uh, uh, lectures and practicals uh, within uh, about 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So please uh, <laughs> put your seatbelt on and <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so uh, so I'll, uh, I'll try to, to, so I've basically selected uh, one or two slides from uh, uh, each of the talk. But uh, before I go on to this, I just uh, put back again the learning, ob learning objective. So um, just to, ref to refresh you and to see whether you, you've actually, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, whether we've, we've been through all, all of the uh, objectives that we had uh, put up at the beginning of the course. So uh, uh, a bit about the fundamental of ocean colors, uh, principle of uh, modeling, uh, understanding a little bit more about uh, harmful algal blooms, uh, algorithm, um, uh, estimating uh, phytoplankton size uh, uh, fraction, estimating phytoplankton phenology, um, conduct research with ocean color data. So you've heard about ocean color indicators, you've heard about model validation, data simulation, climate research, uh, looking at impacts. Uh, you've heard about data management uh, and archiving. Uh, you've seen many portals during the week. And uh, you've also seen some uh, statistical tools and methods. So in a few slides, uh, I've put up the, the photo so that you can uh, remind yourself uh, what happened. So I thought uh, this was a, a very uh, nice slide on the fundamentals of uh, ocean uh, colors. So I think this I the idea of this summary is also when you look back at it, you can think, ah, yes, uh, this was about this. So then you actually want maybe to go back to the entire lecture and, and uh, find out a little bit more about it. So you've heard about uh, absorption, scattering, backscattering, uh, uh, optical properties, uh, ref refraction of the light towards uh, the sensor, the water leaving radiance, uh, the different optical properties uh, associated with the different pigments of the phytoplankton, and also uh, the different uh, material, uh, organic or inorganic, the, the water, the op optically active constituent of the, of the seawater. Uh, uh, so a little bit more about absorption and backscattering uh, and the reflectance, how you estimate it. Uh, then Shuba has been uh, um, giving you a very nice talk on uh, the Ocean Col Color uh, Climate Change Initiative, uh, presenting you the product, uh, uh, how the uh, sensors have been merged, uh, a little bit about uh, errors, uh, bias and uh, uncertainty characterization, so using bias and would mean square uh, difference. Uh, I saw this slide uh, triggered uh, a lot of discussions. I remember uh, keeping looking up at the screen and uh, it came back a few times in, uh, in the questions, in the discussions. So I, I put it back there. I think it uh, interested you quite, quite a lot. Uh, it triggered nice discussions uh, on the different wave bands. Uh, then I gave you a, a short introduction to uh, ecological indicators. Uh, so this is uh, uh, Again, I saw this was a nice summary slide. Uh, indicators that can be estimated from uh, ocean colors. So we've been through a few of them, uh, giving you examples, sometimes going uh, in a little bit more details. Uh, and also some of these indicators uh, can be actually aggregated together to provide a, a more holistic assessment and uh, uh, help toward uh, ecosystem-based uh, management. So this is uh, an excellent application of uh, ocean color remote sensing. Uh, then we had uh, uh, Tom who gave us uh, uh, a great lecture on, uh, on uh, processing chains, data format, data archive. So you learn about the different level of processing from uh, level zero to level four. Uh, he introduced you different data formats, which I thought was quite, quite interesting. I mean, so that you're not so lost when you see the different data formats. Uh, he mentioned about data archive. Uh, and also institutional and national data archives. Uh, he introduced you um, how to access and use some of the data and he presented a, a few of the portals. So I will, I will actually uh, give a, a slide on this. So I, I had uh, one question uh, actually following uh, this presentation. Someone said, ah, but uh, actually it was Lisa, I think, who said this. Uh, it's very difficult then to, to, to decide now because we've had so much uh, options. There is so much choices. <laughs> So where, where do we go from, from there? Uh, so I think it's uh, quite, in, it will come uh, as a personal preferences. I think you, you can explore the different uh, uh, um, sources that we've provided to you. 
personally, I, I give you my preference. I, I couldn't advise uh, on a particular choice, but I find that this uh, particular uh, platform, so it's from PML, uh, if you go to the uh, Ocean Color uh, catalog and, uh, and the threads, I find this one uh, really good because you can actually select which product that you want. You can select uh, a few of them. And uh, you can also enter the coordinates that you want and uh, the time bond that you want. And then you can extract uh, data and output them as a net CDF. And this, I find, is, is, uh, is fantastic. Uh, enfin, or at least, at least for, for me, it works very well to, to use this. So this is just a personal choice, but uh, you probably have a different one, or maybe you find it useful. OK, then we had a, a great uh, morning about uh, uh, learning uh, how to uh, uh, estimate primary production, how to uh, model primary production, uh, with uh, Trevor and Shuba uh, giving uh, great, great details uh, about it. So I thought this was a nice slide uh, summarizing it. I also felt uh, this slide was quite nice, because after uh, seeing many uh, equations uh, during that, uh, that presentation, uh, when it was summarized in uh, six steps, uh, it seemed uh, much more, uh, uh, how to say, uh, accessible, like, uh, like you can do it. It's, uh, it's actually only six steps, maybe. Also, it was many, many equations when it's presented in details. But um, yeah, so, uh, uh, so here we go. And then this, this was the result. So uh, Tom presented, uh, well, actually, Trevor presented this, but it's uh, uh, from a TWAP uh, uh, project. Uh, you can actually find, uh, again, on, on the same uh, portal, if you go to the catalog uh, thread, you can find uh, uh, TWAP products. So you have actual estimates of primary production that are available over the entire uh, CCI archive. I think it's been processed until 2015 now. Uh, so this is where you can access uh, those data. So. Um, OK, we will give you the, the presentations. Uh, at the end, you, you will see. Uh, Claudia will, will show you how to access all of, the, all of our talks. Um, I also had a question uh, about uh, the uh, demo, so, uh, so the demonstration of the, OC, of the OCCCI uh, PML uh, portal. So Tom and uh, Oli from uh, uh, PML uh, gave you a, a demonstration of this portal. Uh, I think something that uh, interested uh, quite a few of you, so of course, uh, to be able to access the data and, and use the visualization tools on this portal, but also the ability to map uh, cruise tracks and to do uh, like this uh, nice scatter plots of uh, matchup. And so I had the question as to where the example file uh, was. And so this is the name of the file, and it's in your uh, virtual box. If you ever want to do this, you uh, an important point is that you need to log in in order to have access to the little GUI where it says upload your file. If you don't log in uh, using Gmail or something, it doesn't show that box. So maybe if, if, um, if some of you are interested. Um, OK, so then Tom uh, went on and had an entire practical uh, using uh, Snap, uh, so where you uh, visualized uh, some uh, uh, images uh, and you applied a mask. Uh, you learn to filter the product, uh, create uh, three stimulus uh, on level one and level two images. You had also an introduction to Python uh, through uh, Jupyter uh, Notebook with, uh, with Tom, and you actually uh, executed a, a few comments. I think this was uh, maybe a little bit challenging for some of you, but uh, I thought it was, it was quite good. It's good also to have some challenge. Um, and so you also access uh, Snappy, uh, so it's a Python Snap uh, interface. And uh, you uh, did some, uh, actually reproduced some of the commands that you had done manually. Uh, yes, and so, sorry. So this is where you can uh, access uh, uh, Snap. I think maybe it was provided in the practical. Um, then we had uh, Dionysios uh, giving us uh, a practical, but uh, prior to that, he uh, gave a nice presentation on uh, actually the use of uh, uh, in situ and uh, satellite ocean color data. So we gave a nice presentation on the uh, phytoplankton color index from the continuous plankton recorder. Uh, also how to uh, look at CZCS and CWIF and bridge uh, the, the different uh, uh, data sets. Um, then uh, it was a super nice practical. Uh, uh, I, think, uh, I think a lot of you enjoyed it was very hands-on. You, you learned to uh, estimate monthly climatologies for chlorophyll and SST, uh, estimate interannual variability, and uh, compute uh, anomalies and cumulative sums. 
Uh, I think the practical was based in the Northern Red Sea, if I'm not wrong, yes. So it was not exactly this plot that you generated, but uh, it, it gives you the idea. And I think you, you enjoy the practical. So these are uh, very uh, basic, but also very powerful uh, statistical and, uh, and ana analytical uh, tools that, that we use uh, to uh, characterize phytoplankton, uh, uh, well, interannual variability and so on. And then Bob um, introduced you to the uh, ocean carbon cycle. So I uh, put this slide here again to put it back uh, into a broader, broader context. Uh, and then uh, I thought this was a, a great slide and he, he did, a, I think, a fantastic job going through uh, each uh, of the uh, boxes uh, displayed on this slide. And, and you had a, a fantastic, uh, I, I found, introduction on, on, on this and how uh, we can actually use uh, ocean color products uh, to gain some information on, uh, on the different uh, carbon components uh, of, of the ocean. So I thought this was uh, brilliant. Um, maybe it wasn't in that order, I don't remember, but here is a slide. Uh, so you also had an introduction uh, to uh, uh, the uh, information, uh, international oceanographic uh, data and exchange uh, information. Uh, no, oceanographic, um, uh, international, so it's IODE, so it's International Oceanographic Data and Information Exchange, uh, so by uh, Claudia. I think uh, the key message was that she really wanted uh, to make you think about uh, data management and having a bit of a data management plan uh, in, in your research. Uh, um, so she mentioned about uh, national um, data center. And so uh, I put here two from the UK. Uh, one is a, a BODC, British Oceanographic Data Center, and uh, CIDA, uh, so it's a center for environmental uh, data analysis, I think. It's where you can actually upload uh, large, large data files, so such as uh, NetCDF. Maybe this one you can also upload NetCDF, but uh, uh, I think, yeah. And uh, actually often nowadays when you upload a file, you also get a DOI number, so you can actually uh, be, it can actually be cited. Uh, your data, when, when they are used, can actually be cited using a, a DOI reference. Uh, so these are for the UK, but uh, you come from many different countries, so you would also have your own uh, national data center. Uh, okay. Uh, then we had uh, another lecture from uh, Bob, uh, uh, going uh, in depth about uh, ocean color uh, algorithm uh, theory, and so he went through each of these steps uh, in terms of uh, radiometric and spectral calibration, geometric corrections, atmospheric corrections. Uh, in-water algorithm theory, validation, and uh, he reviewed a few uh, traditional optical uh, measurements. Uh, he also uh, discussed uh, with you about the uh, Atlantic Meridional Transect uh, program and the different uh, uh, systems and deployments that they do to actually collect uh, data and then uh, do some validation of the uh, chlorophyll concentration and the development of, this, uh, ocean of the chlorophyll retrieval algorithm. So it's active, actually, I didn't know, okay. And then we had uh, Stefano, who uh, uh, as well gave a, a great lecture on uh, uh, model validation and uh, data simulation. So he started with model validation, gave you a definition, a good review on this, presented you, uh, presented you a few uh, 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 metrics, uh, parametric and non-parametric uh, uh, approach uh, to uh, validate the models. Um, then he gave some nice example on point-to-point -point, uh, uh, versus large-scale uh, assessment and uh, uh, also a nice review on emergent uh, properties. And uh, then he went in, uh, I think, uh, with, uh, yeah, with great skills in, uh, on uh, data simulation uh, of chlorophyll uh, to estimate indicators. He gave a few examples. He introduced you to uh, the assimilation, uh, data assimilation uh, methods. Um, and uh, yeah, how to assess uh, uh, skills and, and so on. Okay, I give you a, a practical, uh, I think this was uh, nicely received. Uh, um, it was quite easy, quite hands-on as well on how to uh, visualize uh, phytoplankton uh, seasonality. So it was again looking uh, at the Red Sea. You also learned to uh, map different types of data, looking at bathymetry, uh, position of coral reefs, uh, did simple, uh, simple plots. Uh, and you also examined the uh, phenology indices, and I think this was quite, uh, quite nice. Sophie uh, gave you an intro kind of a lecture on, uh, on policy, uh, so looking at ocean observations and the relevance for policy. 
So you heard about uh, POGO, uh, Partnership for Observation of the Global Ocean, uh, the uh, GEO, so Group on Earth Observation uh, Initiative, and in particular the Blue Planet uh, uh, Oceans and Society uh, task. Uh, you heard about uh, GOSS, so uh, Group on Earth Observation uh, Systems of Systems, so how they uh, try to combine uh, different uh, uh, sources of observations in order to assess a uh, number of uh, or provide relevant information for a different uh, societal benefit area. Uh, she also introduced you uh, to the sustainable development goals uh, that we are targeting to achieve by 2030, in particular uh, life uh, under the water. I think she reviewed with you the, some of the indicators uh, that have been uh, selected. Um, ben Taylor um, gave you uh, an overview of the NEODAS facilities uh, at PML. So I provide you as well the, the website uh, if you want to, to go back to, to this. Uh, Haley uh, gave you a great practical on uh, harmful uh, algal blooms, uh, again using uh, uh, SNAP uh, uh, software. So um, uh, you, you learn uh, actually, uh, well, to, to well, well you, you visualize uh, some, uh, some harmful algal blooms. Uh, you used in situ and so no, it showed uh, using in situ and, and satellite uh, data. Uh, I think you learned to process, uh, understand process of satellite validation with in situ data, uh, explain differences in instrument specification and errors in both the data and the algorithm. Uh, you applied uh, custom uh, empirical band ratio algorithm and compare this with other products. And you relate uh, spectral signatures to the presence of, distant, dist of different species in a, in a bloom assemblage. I thought it was quite, quite nice. You were very focused, I remember, when, when you were doing this practical. It was good. Uh, in the afternoon, uh, uh, Dionysios gave you, um, I think it was a very nice lecture uh, covering the Red Sea ecosystem as an extreme environment. So I, I put here uh, just two, two slides, but he had many examples, clearly has done a, a lot of work uh, on that region. Uh, he also gave you a short introduction on the Gulf of Aden, the seasonality in the Gulf of Aden, um, the cause of the uh, phytoplankton blooms uh, in, in the Red Sea. I think he described this uh, very, very well. Uh, he also uh, showed you uh, the influence of uh, El Nino and the monsoon in that region. Uh, and then he has this uh, fantastic uh, study looking at uh, uh, coral reefs uh, connectivity using uh, space observations. And he gave you a lot of information on this. Uh, very nice paper. Um, I gave you a, a lecture on uh, uh, impact of uh, climate uh, uh, on uh, primary producers. So reviewing uh, different examples. Um, I, think, uh, I think we defined uh, or we yeah, um, try to uh, recap on the climate variability and climate change. What are the differences? Uh, reviewed some trends analysis and what's important to, to bear in mind in terms of the time period that you're looking at. Uh, we looked at different climate indices. Uh, I focused on two, uh, Indian Ocean Dipole, give you some example, and uh, uh, El Nino uh, uh, Climate Index, uh, and looking uh, specifically at the impact of El Nino and different types of El Nino. Uh, so we spent quite a lot of time on this. And then at the end, I give you uh, very rapidly um, uh, just a few examples on uh, changings uh, occurring in the Arctic. Uh, then Shuba gave you a lecture that I think uh, interested you a lot. It triggered a lot of discussion uh, looking at uh, uh, the ocean uh, heat budget uh, um, and uh, how the uh, biology can influence on this uh, ocean uh, heat budget. Um, and she also presented you uh, uh, in, in more detail, uh, compensation depths, critical depths, and again, and lost terms of phytoplankton growth. I think this was a ni nice lecture as well. Um, then this morning, okay, we're already there. You see, it went fast. <laughs> okay, uh, we had a, a practical, uh, again, using Bilco and uh, looking at the uh, impact of uh, El Nino on the physics, ocean physics, and, and, and the biology. And I think, uh, yeah, it's been quite, quite interesting. You use many different uh, um, data sets from uh, many different sensor type, uh, not just ocean color. So I think this was a nice opening. And so, uh, uh, yes, I've been asked uh, um, uh, how to access uh, other data sets than uh, ocean color. So uh, possibly a good starting point. There, there are, again, uh, a wide uh, a variety of uh, portals where you can access data. So um, maybe you have uh, different preferences, but as a, as a first one, maybe you could have a look at the CCI data portal. So you will find 
uh, all of the CCI variables, uh, I presented them to you. So uh, here it doesn't show, but you have uh, all the ocean, uh, ocean variables. So SST, sea level, uh, you would have sea ice, uh, ocean color, and then you have also atmospheric variable and uh, land, land variable. Okay, and so, um, but before I thank you, uh, I want to make uh, some small announcements. So, uh, Claudia will um, uh, come, come in, a, in, a, in a few minutes uh, uh, to uh, first uh, give you the, the link uh, and uh, to help you register to the Ocean Teacher Academy platform. So, this is where all the uh, data, all the course material will be available. So, they will be, you will be able to download all of the presentations, uh, all of the practicals, and uh, if you want to uh, see again uh, some of the lectures, uh, the videos will be, or just the recording will be available as well on that platform. So I think it takes two minutes to register. So Claudia will uh, explain to you how to register. So we can do it now. So all of you will have uh, an access just with your email address and it will give you uh, maybe a password. And uh, then after that, Claudia will also show you uh, the link to um, a questionnaire, a feedback questionnaire. So it's uh, so we're not asking you science question. We are asking you uh, how you whether you enjoy the course or not, or if you have any advice or anything that you would like uh, yeah, to see uh, differently, or if you enjoyed uh, something in particular. You're very welcome to tell us. Uh, so this will be online as well. It's a Survey Monkey questionnaire. So it's just clicking, clicking. Um, and then Kim will come. So we will have about ten minutes to do to do this. Uh, maybe 15 and then Kim uh, uh, from the admin uh, will come uh, with some uh, forms to give you to, to fill in so you have a lot of work to do suddenly <laughs> you thought it was finished but no um, okay and so she will collect uh, all of your uh, receipt uh, uh, so this is for your uh, um, for the travel and expenses uh, claim forms and uh, if you have any questions or anything then uh, then please let us know it's a good time then once all of this is done, we should probably be 12 o'clock. So at that time, uh, Mark has explained to you uh, how to pack your computer. <laughs> so this is a time when you will pack your computer and then we can go for lunch. OK, so thank you very, very much. It's been a great pleasure to actually uh, have this course with you for the entire week. I've, uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. I think you've been uh, an amazing uh, group, actually, very very dynamic, very enthusiastic, um, and very focused. You've been uh, working very hard, uh, so it's been, uh, it's been great. And so, yes, uh, just before I say, okay, one more word and then I stop. So um, Martin uh, has uh, very kindly and sent you the email. He created a Facebook uh, group uh, that is called PML Training Course 2017. So voila, okay, thank you very much. <laughs>